Hello everyone, this is Paolo Zimmaro from University of California, Los Angeles. Thanks ERI and its leadership for organizing this very interesting webinar and for having me here. I'm going to present some slide on the geographic and temporal distribution of ground motions and damage as observed after the 2016 Central Italy earthquake sequence. What I'm going to present is the result of a comprehensive collaborative effort carried out uh, by the Geotechnical Extreme Event Reconnaissance Association, GEAR, sponsored by the National Science Foundation. As a result, let me acknowledge the work of Professor John Stewart at UCLA, uh, who was the leader of the GEAR team, and Giuseppe Lanzo from University of Rome, La Sapienza, who was the co-leader of the team. I would like to then acknowledge the work of many individuals like Maria Giovanna Durante at UCLA, Kevin Franke at BYU, Rob Cahen at USGS, Brett Lingwall at South Dakota School of Mines, Giuseppe Scasserra at University of Molise, Luigi Di Sarno at University of Sannio, Tasso Sextos and Raffaele De Risi at University of Bristol, and Stefano Gar Gori, Emanuele Falcucci, Fabrizio Galadini at INGV. Um, if you are interested in learning more about our research effort, you can take a look to the gearassociation.org website where we published several interesting post-earthquake reconnaissance reports. This is the outline of my presentation. We'll take a look to the tectonic setting in central Italy. We'll then see some observed evidences of surface faulting. We'll take a look to ground motion and we'll analyze the aftershock pattern. And then we'll analyze geographic distribution of damage and damage accumulation throughout the whole sequence. This is the tectonic setting of Italy, mainly composed of normal faults. Uh, on the right-hand side uh, of this slide, you can see that all red uh, segments are uh, actually seismogenic sources. And normal fault events from Italy are particularly important because a large majority of earthquake ground motions in global databases, like the PEER and GA West 2 database about normal faulting, uh, are from Italian earthquakes. And so uh, understanding what's going on in, in that region is also important, uh, and it has a strong impact on global uh, earthquake engineering analysis. Let's take a look to the area and where uh, these earthquake sequence uh, occurred. On 24 August 2016, there was a magnitude 6.1 event not so far from the town of Amatrice uh, in central Italy. And then a few months after 26 October, there was another main shock 5.9 uh, event. And then on 30 of October 2016, there was an even stronger event with magnitude 6.5. As a result of these uh, earthquakes, the GEAR team deployed uh, a reconnaissance mission between the end of August and mid-September following the 24 August event, and between mid-November and mid-December following the October event. All information that I'm going to show you in the remainder of this presentation uh, are actually from these reconnaissance missions that I was part of. So this is the seismogenic structure responsible for the earthquake sequence. is the Mount Vettore Mount of a Ball fault system. And the red arrows are pointing at the uh, evidences of past uh, surface faulting from these uh, fault. And this is an, a very uh, interesting area where many earthquakes occurred in the last centuries. These are two pictures showing evidences of surface faulting during the 2016 earthquake sequence. On the left hand side, uh, there's surface faulting evidences after the August event, something around 25 centimeters. And as you can see there, there's Emanuela Falcucci from INGV standing next by. Uh, and after the October events, the same spot uh, actually showed more than one meter surface faulting, uh, which is remarkable. 
and the gear reconnaissance team actually mapped the whole surface faulting all along Montpetore Fault. Let's take a look to the spatial distribution of these main shocks and associated aftershocks. As you can see here in this slide, the central part shows the 2016-17 earthquake sequence. Uh, the green dots are aftershocks after the 24 August event. The red dots are aftershocks after the 30 October event. And a bit north of that, the blue dots are representing the aftershocks after the 26th of October event. In orange, south uh, of the 24 August event, there are uh, aftershocks uh, that are uh, recorded during January 2017. So as you can see, the temporal distribution of events was spanning almost uh, six months between 2016 and 2017. As you can see here, north of this area, there was the epicenter of the Umbria Marche event in 1997, and south of that area, in 2009, there was the L'Aquila earthquake. So as you can see here, this earthquake sequence was filling a gap between two large earthquakes occurred in the last 20 years. We've done uh, some ground motion spatial distribution analysis, and this is the main result of what we've done. As you can see here, uh, these are maps showing spatial distribution of peak ground acceleration after the 24 August event and 30 of October event. As you can see, in both cases, there's a large area involved uh, in these earthquakes and, uh, and very high peak ground accelerations were recorded throughout. As you can see, uh, the 30 of October event caused accelerations uh, at around 0.8 g uh, at its maximum, and this is really remarkable. So let's take a look to the spatial distribution of ground motion and damage combined. Here in this slide, I'm showing the same maps of spatial distribution of peak ground acceleration showed before, but I'm overlapping now uh, villages that the gear team inspected after each event. As you can see here, number one is a very interesting town, Akumuli, uh, which was very close by the epicenter of the 24 August 2016 event, and not so far away from the area of maximum peak ground acceleration of the 30 of October event. I'm then showing Amatrice, number two, which is a bit south of Akumuli, again, very close by the epicenter of the 24 August event, and not so far away from that of the 30 of October event. Number three is a spot north of Amatrice and Accumuli, very close by the 26th of October epicenter. Visso was heavily damaged, uh, actually, during the October events. And then the fourth location worth of showing on this map is Norcia, which was very close by all three epicenters. And we have some interesting stories about Norcia, not only in this presentation, but also uh, in the presentations that my colleagues will be making afterwards. So our reconnaissance, reconnaissance approach took advantage not only of traditional on-site visual inspections, but also uh, modern technology uh, tools like drones. So we used drones, we took pictures of wide areas along the, uh, the, the whole area, and then uh, we built 3D models that allowed us to perform detailed uh, virtual inspection of wide areas even afterwards. Uh, and so the combination of traditional and innovative methodologies in modern uh, reconnaissance, I guess, is going to be a key also for the future. And this event uh, showed us that this is possible and it is actually uh, beneficial for uh, speeding up reconnaissance efforts. These are two, two screenshots from 3D models for Accumuli. One is from the 24 August 2016 event. The second one on the right-hand side of the slide is after the 30 October event. As you can see, Accumuli was a big example of incremental damage as a result of the whole sequence. This is more evident from this slide 
where I'm showing a comparison of a detailed structure by structure uh, analysis uh, after 24 August event and after 30 October event. As you can see, uh, higher damage states that are related to collapse of buildings uh, are more evident after the 30 of October and there was uh, a very, very important incremental damage as a result of the whole sequence in Accumuli. Uh, this is a matrice, same strategy, uh, detailed structures by structure uh, inspections and 3D models by drones. As you can see here, also a matrice experienced a very remarkable uh, incremental damage as a result of the whole sequence. And this is one of the keys of uh, these uh, post-earthquake reconnaissance. This is a lesson uh, we can learn. It's very important to take a look to main shocks, but also uh, it is truly important to analyze the impact of the entire sequence on our built environment. And these maps are showing that sometimes damage can be disproportional as a result of long earthquake sequences. This is Norcia. Again, uh, the same strategy, uh, we have two maps after 24 of August and after 30 of October, but Norcia, despite being very close by all three epicenters, did not experience a lot of collapses. And so, as you can see here, there was some incremental damage accumulation after the, uh, as a result of the whole sequence, but after the 30 of October event, only a few structures collapsed and you'll see more about it in the uh, uh, next presentation uh, that will be showing you something about the reason why Norcia behaved like that. So here these plots are just underlining what I just said. Uh, the overwhelming majority of structures in Norcia uh, are still standing after the whole sequence and only a small percentage of structures uh, totally collapsed as a result of the uh, earthquake sequence in 2016. So let's take uh, a, a brief look to what happened to Norcia. Here I'm showing you a map that is overlapping structures that collapsed, marked in red and orange, and these structures were actually uh, collapsed after uh, the 30th of October event. Uh, our damage levels here are based on visual inspections on site. Uh, this map overlaps those structures with damage proxy maps from NASA JPL, uh, which are maps based on satellite images and INSAR uh, that are determining uh, areas where after a certain event, uh, vertical displacements took place. And so uh, wherever you have a concentration of vertical displacements from satellite and insar uh, images, you have a concentration of yellow and, or, and, and, and brown pixels. These maps are very useful because uh, they are published right after, post, uh, right after disasters, not only earthquakes, but also hurricanes and other natural disasters. And so they can guide to some extent post-earthquake reconnaissance efforts and post-earthquake emergency response because they can drive us towards area where uh, the damage took place. So here we've done some validation of these maps and as you can see here every time we see concentration of yellow and brown pixels we found collapsed structures showing that these maps are very useful and are a very good rapid tool to organize post-earthquake post uh, emergency response and reconnaissance efforts. So a few closing remarks. Uh, this earthquake sequence that took place in 2016 and 2017 in Italy had a lot of main shocks and many uh, earthquakes with magnitude greater than five. Uh, Mount Vettore, Mount, Mount Bove fault system showed surface rupture, which is a remarkable observation, and strong ground motions were recorded in a very large area in the Apennines. There was damage accumulation during the whole sequence, and this is one of the key of these post-earthquake uh, reconnaissance. We observed a lot of incremental damage as a result of multiple earthquakes. We also showed 
the effectiveness of implementing multi-scale reconnaissance approaches by using visual inspections, 3D models from drones, and maps based on satellite and INSAR data. I think that going towards future reconnaissance efforts, these multi-scale approaches can become uh, more and more effective in analyzing results uh, of, post of, of, of disasters right after they occur. Thank you so much. This is my last slide. Uh, if you are interested in learning more about uh, the GEAR team reconnaissance following the uh, uh, 2016 Central Italy earthquake sequence, you can go on the gearassociation.org website and take a look to multiple reports that are published there. Thank you so much.